And welcome back to part number three of our instructional video series entitled Signed and Committed. Part number three will deal with editing and inserting pictures. Now, uh, prior to this step, uh, there will be an assumption, and we all know what happens when you assume. Yep, break the word apart and you know what happens. But uh, uh, we're going to assume that you have already taken some photos. And in this case, as you're looking at our, uh, our products here, this was a, a finished product, and this is what we're trying to create uh, based upon, this is our inspiration, uh, this uh, poster here of Jake Wiley. Um, when, when we set out, when I set out to accomplish this project, I needed to get some photos. Uh, I already had a photo of Koa uh, in action during a football game. But I did not have a picture of Koa with his splendidly wavy, beautiful hair and uh, a football in his jersey. Um, the picture to the left is Koa in action uh, during a game. <clears throat> the picture to the right is uh, well after the season, in fact, after the basketball season. Uh, this photo to the right was taken roughly two to three weeks ago uh, during spring sports season. Uh, by that time, by the time this picture was taken, uh, Koa had completed two sports, uh, named most valuable player in the Northeast A-League as a quarterback for the football, uh, football team, Newport Grizzlies football team, uh, leading the Newport Grizzlies to a semifinal appearance in the state playoffs, and then later in basketball, of course, the point guard of a state-bound basketball team that made it to the Yakima Sundome for the second year in a row. So this young gentleman you see in this poster to the right, Koa Poncho, by the time he uh, was taking this uh, photo, uh, he, he had those things in his back pocket. And uh, I have to say that uh, with all sincerity, he, he carries those things around in his back pocket with complete humility. Nothing braggadocious about this gentleman at all. Um, just an absolute fantastic example of grizzly character. And uh, he is going on to Whitworth University, where he is going to play for the football team as a pirate. So, I'm rambling. Uh, prior to this step of editing and inserting pictures, you need photos. The one on the left I already had. The one on the right was one of a number of photos. I'm going to go to my desktop, open up this uh, folder where I have a number of uh, items relevant to Koa. And so that you can see these a little bit better, I will make them larger, maybe. And Koa came into our studio and he posed for a number of photos. You can see him with his uh, hands on his waist, uh, smiling and kind of smiling, one with a football in front, uh, another one right there. Um, these are just the keepers out of a, show to, a photo shoot where he took a succession of about 30 or 40 photos. Uh, some of them he was smiling, some of them he wasn't, some he had a football, some he didn't. And uh, those are the photos that we took of Koa. We ended up using, where was that one? I think... Mm, Hmm. Let me see. He's got his arm to his side. It might be that one right there. Maybe. Maybe. Um, let me see. What else do we have as examples? I don't think it's that one right there. I think it's going to be that one right there. Oh, wait a second. There it is. It's got to be that one right... No, it's not that one right there. Boy. This is tough. I think we'll use that one right right there. So that photo right there, we're going to say is the one that we are going to use in this, um, in this project. And we will break for just a moment. And after that interruption, we'll try this again. So we are in a position here where we have Koa. And I, I'm not exactly sure if that is the exact photo right here that we're using in our project. But it'll work well enough. And so uh, here is our project. To this point, we have created our background uh, with a stuff, oh, let me see here, um, a gradient, uh, some wispy like, um, oh goodness, what do you want to call them, smoke, and a, the illusion of a football field in the background. And over here you see Koa 
uh, in that photo that we took and we're going to insert him in here. So one way of doing it is just to click drag and drop and boom there's Koa. Um, but he's not uh, proportionate uh, at least not to the same extent as uh, that that other uh, that we've taken. So in order to make him larger I'm going to adjust that a smidge, grab the corner, hold down the shift button and make him bigger. Let me look back here. Koa, we're going to go up there. Boom. And uh, we might need to make him just a smidge bigger. Uh, shift button, grab the corner, move it again. And boy, that's pretty close right there. Let me take a look at my other. That's pretty close. Not bad. Okay, it's going down to about his elbow. We might need to size it down just a smidge. And I'll do that. And I think this is something we're going to be able to work with. There is Koa. He takes up, uh, if you're using your rule of thirds, and you got your tic-tac-toe uh, going on there, uh, he is going to be right in the crosshairs of the upper right-hand quadrant in the rule of thirds. A little blip. Got distracted again, so we'll pick up right there. Um, so we're going to call that good, and I'm going to hit click the. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to click the uh, check box there. Uh, and now you'll notice that with the X's there, and it's somewhat pixelated. Photoshop does that. It's uh, it's quicker and easier to manipulate a photo when it is not in its full. Um, uh, I can't think of the word right now. Um, anyway. Full quality. We'll use the word quality. Why not? And uh, when it is in somewhat of a lesser quality, it's easier to manipulate, move around, resize. It doesn't force the computer to have to use up so much uh, of its of its resources to manipulate it. Now, once you have it in the place that you want it, click the uh, check mark, and you'll see that it turns into a much higher quality um, photo and image that we'll be using in our product. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And here is, here is what we're dealing with. Uh, there is Koa, and he is placed. And uh, obviously, we do not want all of that yuck um, in the background around him. So this is the opportunity for you to use the Refine Edge Tool tutorial that has been provided in Canvas or um, you, you could Google or you could YouTube Refine Edge Tool in uh, CS5, um, Photoshop CS5. There is a two and a half to three minute tutorial that has been shared with you, and you can go to that, use it. Uh, I'm going to use those same skills right now and try to uh, get rid of the background using the refine tool, refine edge tool as well as a selection tool to get rid of the entire background so that all that we have left is Koa in the same manner that he is in <coughs> the uh, the poster that we're using as the example that we're trying to copy. So when I am attempting to do that, first I have to rasterize that because instead of bringing it in through bridge I just uh, click dragged and dropped him in there so that photo was now rasterized and it is able to be edited just to be safe again I like to make a duplicate layer so if I do mess up somewhere along the line I have the original photo that I've dropped in it's in its same uh, size same proportion uh, if I were to only have one layer there and I went back I made a mistake and I had to reinsert the photo again it would be probably not exactly the same proportion size and so on and so forth so by making a layer right now a duplicate layer in the event that I mess up uh, my editing process here uh, this gives me an opportunity to go back and start with the same proportions and the same uh, layer so I'm, I'm gonna deal with the copy so here we have Koa and uh, what we want to do here is we want to get rid of all of the background now using the selection tool it's super simple when we have real defined edges here with his uniform, his finger, the football, um, but where we are going to have an issue is his hair. And that is where the refine edge tool is going to come in really handy. In fact, I'm going to create another duplicate error 
uh, duplicate layer because in, in just a schmidge uh, you, you'll see why potentially I will want to do that. So I'm going to grab my selection tool and right now it is just a minuscule little guy so I'm going to create a larger size for the uh, selection tool. There, that's something that I can uh, use right there. So using the refine edge tool uh, and the way we go about using that, first we use the selection tool and select uh, the area that is going to be problematic and that's his hair. And we're going to go beyond it. Normally when we're using our selection tool we'll try to be a little bit more precise than this but not not now. Whoops, now I went way too overboard so I'm going to hit option and get this thing back in a more manageable reasonable thing here. So if it's a little bit bigger than normal, if it's a little bit sloppy, that's fine because the Refine Edge tool is going to refine that and make it more precise in just a moment. Uh, notice up here, I'm going to hover over the top of it. If you click Refine Edge, the Refine Edge tool will now come up. Now with the Refine Edge tool, this gives us a couple of options to see um, the, the area, and that's this area right here that we're dealing with. You can use the overlay, the black and white, um, it, there's a variety of different things you can use, but in the Refine Edge tutorial that has been provided to you, it tells you that uh, you have your choice, uh, you have your marching ants as well. Uh, sometimes in the Refine Edge tool tutorials, there's multiple ones out there. Some of them they want you to use quick mask mode, but here in this Refine Edge usage, I'm going to click Smart Radius, bump the radius over to like 3, and then, let's see here, oh boy, and the size of the tool is like really, really miniature, so let me make it larger, there we go. And here I can start to go around the edges of his hair, and notice how the Refine Edge tool, when used properly, is going to leave his hair there, and cut out the rest of the background. So, really cool way to distinguish. Let's say if you're if you're trying to separate or edit uh, a shaggy dog or a, a lady with long hair, the Refine Edge tool is a great way to do it. There's multiple ways of doing it, of course, but this is one of the ways that I've learned is pretty pretty cool and pretty quick. So there we have uh, Koa <coughs> with most of his hair. I even went back there and touched it up a little bit. You can see individual little pieces of his hair have not been erased. While it keeps the integrity and the shape and the look of his natural hair, it gets rid of the background as well. So I can click OK to that. It's working, it's working, and in a moment, boom, there we go. Now. The marching ants are still marching around his head, and that's because Photoshop has recognized where it needs to eliminate stuff, but it hasn't eliminated it yet. So we'll go to our Move tool. Um, I will click uh, Inverse, and I'm going to get rid of everything on that layer except the stuff that we identified as being the Keeper stuff using the Refine Edge tool. Select, deselect, and there we have his head. Now. A few moments ago, I made an extra copy, and I did that on purpose so that now we can go back and keep what we want. So we have Koa uh, all the way down to his black shirt, the black neck, and uh, here in, it, we're just going to use a selection tool and get rid of everything else so that together we have uh, what we want. And this shouldn't take nearly as long. Well. There we go. Um, I spoke too soon. Okay, go back and massage that a little bit. Get that out there. And since we have a much more distinct, clear uh, outline of him, it's not going to be nearly as difficult. We don't have to go back and use the Refine Edge tool. Mm.
And so notice it says plus, and when I go too far, I'm just going to hit the option. I could go up here and change um, the tool to be uh, subtraction mode from selection, or I can just hold down on the option key, and notice that it turns from a plus to a minus. Oops. Come on. And I can push it back where it needs to be. Okay. I'm going to get rid of all of that stuff. So, this. Someone who is uh, much more Photoshop friendly <coughs> and more of an expert uh, would find ways of doing this much more quickly and efficiently. This is just the way that I've learned how to do it. And um, I'm not being overly precise right now. If I wanted to be way, way, way more precise, um, I would take my time, maybe even get my wake and board out. I would zoom in and make sure that even these small little spots here, now my tool's too big, are being addressed properly. Whoops, wrong button. I still have the tool is a little bit big for doing this. Uh, finite type of uh, editing. Okay, so instead of zooming out, oops, hold on here. That's still bugging me. To get that little area up there, hold down the option, bump it up where it belongs. That's going to be pretty close. Here. Okay pretty close. Now instead of zooming out, what I can do now is hold, press down on my space bar and then click and drag. There's an area there that needs a little bit of refining, a little massaging and fixing. Hold down on my space bar, continue to go around the edges. There's a little spot that needs to be fixed just a smidge. Not much. I'll hold down my option key and push that out a little bit. Right here we have another spot where we could use some fixing and right there too. Okay, hold on to my space bar, start moving. Oop, right here. This is some bad editing. When you're doing it at such large scale, it doesn't do it quite as uh, accurately and fine out as you'd like. So a little push and pull. There we go. Hold on to my space bar. Fix that in there just a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now over on the side. Ooh, the marching ants got away from us right in here. All the way up into this area. Hold down the option. Bring it back out where it belongs. There's a little bit of... Uh, daylight right in there, but I'm not going to get too concerned about that, because once this gets zoomed out, you won't be able to tell for the most part. Let me push that down in there. And fix his thumb. I just bumped a little bit of it off of there. This didn't get edited very well, so I'll try to fix that. down that. Oops, wrong side. Hold in the option. Fix that. Mm. This whole side right here did not edit very well. And we'll bump that. Hold down my option. Yuck. Didn't grab that edge very well. Looks like up here the same deal. So this is just slow and monotonous. Selection tool is the tool that I've learned to use <coughs> the majority of the time. There's other ways of doing it faster, of course. It's just the way that I do it. So there we go. We have everything uh, selected that we want to get rid of. Go to my Move tool. Hit Delete on the keyboard. Deselect. And when I turn on both of those, there we have Koa um, with no background. And we can start to see how he looks in relationship to 
uh, the rest of the background that we had previously created, and that looks pretty good. If we compare that, if we compare that to what we have going on over here, we're, we're not doing too bad. Let's try that. Yeah. So that's pretty close. Of course, we have titles. We have other things to incorporate. But if I make a comparison between the one on the right that we just completed and the one on the left, which is our example that we're trying to recreate and follow, we've got a pretty good likeness. Uh, again, this is editing and inserting a picture that we took. You will follow the same process with the other picture of Koa on the left-hand side, the picture of him in action. Uh, that picture will be provided to you. And, uh, of course, you will have to do a little bit of editing on, on that as well. But you will edit that photo and, uh, and put it in place and make it proportionate. Likewise with uh, the photo of Koa on the right-hand side here, where we come up with our end result like this. Um, so that's pretty much the end of part three, editing and inserting pictures. Uh, the other items that need to be inserted, we'll discuss or get to um, in between parts. Uh, we have some, uh, that photo of him in action, the PNG of uh, the bear head and the NCAA logo. Those items we will insert in between uh, parts three and four of this series. But as for right now, we have edited and inserted inserted and edited a primary photo of Koa in our larger in our larger uh, project uh, to this point of course we have configured our canvas we have created a background and we have taken uh, inserted and edited a primary picture into our project and the remainder will be done in between parts and you will follow the same project to get the same result or darn near the same result so that's the end of part three we now move along to part four.